Hello again everybody and welcome back to the fourth video in the Atmel uh, microcontroller programming series and in this video we're going to perform analog to digital conversion so let's dive right into it G-I-T-H-U-B M-I-C-R-O-C-O-N microcontrollers and more take the spaces out and we're going to go here and then when it comes up we'll choose repositories and then we're going to go down to Atmel programming tutorial for analog inputs and we've got uh, four analog to digital converter uh, examples to go through today but um, we're going to use the same circuit for all four of them so let's go ahead and download that and take a look save target as and then save it to the desktop okay that's good uh, downloads completed minimize that and we'll bring this up okay so the circuit is uh, relatively similar to the previous uh, previous projects that we've been through so far uh, the uh, programming connector setup is exactly the same and then you've got your power and ground here and the power and ground here are the same uh, this is one of the differences here is that on pin 28 we now have a 10k ohm pot and again we'll get into this uh, more detail later in code but this is what it looks like in hardware here it's a pretty straightforward setup and we're going to I should mention we're going to read in an analog value from this 10k ohm pot and we're going to read that in with an 8-bit resolution the AT Mega 328p is capable of reading up to a 10-bit resolution for the analog to digital converter but we'll just use uh, 8 of the bits and that will allow us to simply dump that 8-bit value out to port uh, D so as you see here PD 0 1 2 3 4 and then 5 6 and 7 we have a lead on each of them so we can just take in our 8-bit uh, value actually it's a 10-bit value from the ADC but we're only going to use 8 bits of it and then we can just dump that 8-bit uh, value out here to our LEDs to see what they are and of course the power supply here is the same so uh, that's the circuit it's a pretty simple circuit and I'm gonna pause for just a second to get the picture in picture going okay so there's the picture in picture and we can bring our a repository back up here so we're gonna run these four uh, examples today so the first thing to consider is what's the difference between uh, single conversion and free running well there's sort of two different ways that you can um, do the analog to digital conversion you can uh, have a, a bit that you set each time you'd like conversion to begin and then um, when the chip is completed conversion it will uh, change that bit to a zero then you can look at the result in the uh, register that the EDC puts the result in and then you set that start conversion bit back to a 1 and then you wait until it's a 0 again at which point it's done and continually uh, loop in that fashion that's called the single conversion mode or uh, you can have the chip essentially just continuously put the result in that result register and then you look at the result register uh, as often as you would like your program to and that's called free running and then we can also in addition to uh, not using interrupts which these two examples here do not we can also do both free running uh, with an interrupt and we can also do single conversion with an interrupt which whoops didn't mean to click on that okay so and again these all use the uh, same circuit so we can shoot through all four of these examples pretty quickly today so let's go ahead and start with uh, ADC single conversion dot C and we'll go ahead and fire up Atmel Studio and then I'm gonna choose raw here and move this over to the other screen to copy and paste out of it and there we go, Atmel Studios up. So now we're going to choose File, New Project, and then we're going to paste in our name here, GCC Executable, and check Create Directory for Solution. And our chip, of course, is the 328P. And then wait for the project to be created for just a moment here. Okay, there we go. So then we're going to rename it ADC Single Conversion C, and then copy and paste in the code. And then I always like to do Control M, Control P to turn off code folding. And I think we'll stick to the same format as in the previous videos. We'll go ahead and implement the program first, and then we'll um, take a look at the code second. So if we press Control F5, whoops, okay, I got to plug in the battery here yet. Okay, and it also asks us to pick a programmer, of course. So continue, then we're going to choose uh, Atmel ICE and ISP, and then Control F5 again. And so remember, we're reading in pin 28, we're reading the um, analog value in and then we're going to show that value in binary on these eight LEDs here and this here is the LSB and this is the MSB so um, I'm trying not to block the potentiometer with my hand but there's really no way not to do that and still turn it so I'm going to slowly begin turning the potentiometer and so then we're going to get to the value one and then t uh, two and that's actually three and then four uh, and so on so remember these bits here then are worth uh, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, and 128 so if we go about halfway up 
uh, we should see 127 is all but the last bit, and then 128 is going to be just the last bit. Let me see, it's a, again, the potentiometer is a little touchy, but there we go, that's 128, and then so on. So we can continue to turn the potentiometer up until we get to 255, which is all of them lit. And then we can turn it back down. So the program's working successfully for us, so let's go ahead and take a look at the code. So we're going to start out uh, pretty similar to the previous program. We have the FCPU uh, line is the same. We have uh, an include. And then just as we took a look at in the last uh, video, we have these macros here, bit is set and bit is clear. And then we have three registers that we're going to set. Actually, first I should mention the data direction register. We're going to set that uh, DDRD to um, all ones because all of port D is being used as output. And then we have uh, the three uh, analog to digital converter registers that we're going to set the bits for. So that's uh, AD MUX, ADC multiplexer selection register. And then we have uh, analog to digital control and status register A, ADC SRA. And then, of course, there's an ADC SRB as well. And if you're wondering, uh, if you're not familiar with uh, data sheets for uh, microcontrollers, this would be a good time to uh, look some of these uh, registers up. So, for example, if you're running AD, AD MUX, you know, suppose that these comments weren't here or you were trying to make a program on your own where you maybe didn't have a concrete example to begin with and you were wondering what does the ADMUX register do? Well, you can simply bring up the data sheet here. And let's see, so if we search for the name of the register, ADMUX is a pretty commonly used register, so it's going to appear multiple places, but eventually you'll get to a table, which is pretty much the same as those comments that I put in the code. So here you can see each of the eight bits for ADMUX, and then, of course, it tells you about what they are. And then it, some of these earlier descriptions are, are going to give you uh, some more elaborative information. But if you'd like to directly look at what you'd like to set the bits to, for example, if you were wondering, um, how do I set my voltage uh, reference selection? Well, here you'd see that if you'd like to use uh, your power and ground as the extremes of your... Uh, voltage reference, which is what we did, because that's how we wired our potentiometer. One end was going to power, one end was going to ground, and then the sense in the middle goes back to the microcontroller. So uh, in that case, we would like to use AVCC as our uh, voltage reference selection. So then we know that we can set ref S1 to A0 and then ref S0 to A1. And pretty much you can apply a similar process to uh, any of the registers in the data sheet. So let's jump back to the code here. And so that's how we determine RefS1 uh, and 0 here, set those to 0 and 1, because we'd like to use AVCC for reference voltage. And then this next uh, next uh, bit here, ADLAR, requires a little bit of explanation that's left justify ADC result. So the uh, analog to digital converter in the 18 mega 328p is uh, 10 bits. But, of course, the registers in the 328p are 8 bits. So how do you fit a 10-bit result in a register? Well, you can't. You have to use two registers. And those are called uh, analog to digital converter high and analog to digital converter low. So you have two options here. If you'd like to use all 10 bits of the resolution, you can right justify the result, in, in which case you would set ADLAR to 0 to do that. And then you could read the uh, ADCH and ADCL bits together into a 16-bit variable. Or alternatively, if you only need 8 bits of resolution, which is all we're using today, you can simply left justify the result, in which case the uh, 8 significant most bits will be in ADCH, and then the two highest bits of ADCL will be the least significant bits of the result, but we don't need those. We can just throw out the least two significant bits and only look at the value in ADCH. And that's what we're going to do today. So we're going to set ADLAR to 1. And bit 4 is uh, always 0. We can just leave that as 0. And then mux uh, 3, 2, 1, and 0. Uh, if you, again, consult the data sheet, you'll find that setting those to 0, 1, 0, 1 uh, sets you to use ADC5, which is pin 28 for input. So if you wanted to use a different pin, for example, well, I'll just go ahead and pull it up in the data sheet here. So uh, let's see here. Uh, whoops. I've got to choose this continuous in the viewer here. There we go. So here's where it explains uh, MUX3 through MUX0, and then, so for example, suppose you wanted to use pin ADC4, then you would set these to uh, 0, 1, 0, 0, and so on. Okay, and then let's uh, quickly scroll down and just take a glance here at ADC SRB. As it works out, we can just leave this all zeros. Uh, so that's a very easy register to set. And then, so the last register remaining to consider is ADC SRA. And we're going to set some of these bits differently throughout the four examples that we're uh, looking at today, but we're always going to set the ADEN bit, that's analog to digital enable. Uh, and ADSC, that's the bit that we set to actually start the conversion. We'll do that momentarily in this program. We do it down here, but we'll, we'll get to that in further detail in just a moment. 
but for uh, at first I prefer not to set the ADSC bit. And uh, A date is short for analog to digital converter auto trigger enable. And that essentially means free running mode when you set it. But in this case, we're not using free running mode. We're using single conversion mode. So we're going to set that to a zero. And we're not using interrupts yet. So we're not going to set the interrupt flag or the interrupt enable. And actually, these last three are worth going over as well. ADPS 2, 1, and 0. What these do is they set your uh, analog to digital converter clock, which in most cases has to be slower than the clock, clock for the chip uh, generally. And uh, let's see, we'll show in the data sheet if we go to here, and then here's the beginning of the analog to digital converter, and I think it's down just a little bit. It explains, yes, here we go. So the successive approximation circuitry, which by the way, this is a successive approximation is how the ATmega328P performs analog to digital converter that, uh, conversion. That's how uh, most chips do it as well. So uh, EDC successive approximation. There's, I believe it has its own Wikipedia page. Yes, it does. So uh, you can read this if you're interested in uh, the details of what's going on inside the chip. But in any case, to perform the successive approximation, the uh, ADC requires a uh, lower clock frequency than the chip generally has in most cases. And that is in the range from uh, 50 kilohertz to 200 kilohertz. So in our case, for example, we're using a general cl uh, chip clock of one megahertz. So if we choose these bits here, ADPS 2, 1, and 0 to divide the general chip clock by 8 to get our ADC clock. That's going to give us a 120 kilohertz ADC clock, which is nicely in the middle of that 50 to 200 kilohertz range. So that'll be a good choice for us. So then we go ahead and set ADC SRA as follows. And now we can, now that we've considered our registers, we can jump down to the while loop. So while one, again, that should look familiar by now. So ADSC, this is the bit that you actually set, uh, which is in the ADC uh, SRA register. This is the bit you actually set to start the analog to digital conversion. And once we set it to one, uh, the conversion will begin. And when the chip finishes conversion, it will set ADSC back to zero. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to infinitely uh, loop as long as the bit is still set. And then once the chip clears the bit, we will get past this while loop and then we'll get down to here. So at that point we know conversion is done, so we simply take the result, the high eight bits of the result, which are in ADCH, and dump those onto port D. And then we continue to loop around. So uh, that completes the non-interrupt single conversion code. So let's go ahead and jump right into the next example which of course is the non-interrupt uh, free running. So if we go back to here and then we go to free running, fire up Atmel Studio and go to raw and once again I'll just slide this over here and the next three programs are really very similar to the first one uh, so this, this won't take much time at all here. So we're going to go ahead and close that file new uh, project GCC executable uh, paste in the name, choose OK, choose our chip, 328P, and then that, and give it just a second to create the project for us. Then we're going to right-click on main, rename, paste in the name, and paste in the code, and then Control m Control p to turn off code folding. I really wish there was a way to do that permanently. And then we're going to go ahead and first run the program, and then we'll go over the code. So it's going to tell us to pick a programmer. OK, and just make sure the battery's plugged in. Yes, it is. Atmel ICE, interface ISP, control F5 again. And now the program is loaded. So we're going to find we get the same behavior. So we can count up. I'm trying to go as slow as I can on the potentiometer here. So there we go. One, two, three, uh, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you get the idea. We can go up to 127 will be all but the last one, then there's 128, and then we can go all the way up to 255, and then back down to zero. So it works great. Let's take a look at the code. So uh, this is very similar to the previous example. Uh, the first register, ADMUX, is the same, and the last register, ADC SRB, is the same. So the only difference here is ADC SRA. So let's take a look at the difference here. So we're still we still have to uh, enable the analog to digital converter, and we're still not going to start it yet at this point. Uh, in this case, we are going to enable the analog to digital auto trigger. That's A date. Uh, we're going to set that to one, and we're not going to set the interrupt flags because again, we're not using interrupts yet, and the clock is the same. So the only difference up here was this A date bit is set to one, and then when we get down here, we can simply uh, put this line in here to start analog to digital conversion the first time and then it's going to continually go so we don't have to restart it each time we can simply continuously dump the value from ADCH into port D and that completes the program so let's go ahead and take a look at the interrupt versions next 
So let's do the with interrupt single conversion. Again, I'm going to explain uh, interrupts a little bit more uh, in the next video. So um, hopefully this will at least make sense to you. Um, and then we can get into that in more detail subsequently. So let's go ahead and paste in the name here. Okay, start page, uh, file new project, and then we're going to call this ADC with interrupt single conversion, and okay. And of course we're still using the 328P, and there we go. And then as soon as it comes up, we'll go ahead and rename main. Okay, and rename, paste in the new name, and then paste in the code and then get rid of code folding and save it and let's go ahead and run it and then we'll take a look at the code and it's going to tell us to pick a programmer of course okay the error message will be there in just a second there we go at mel ice isp control f5 again and there we go programs loaded into the chip so again we're going to get the same behavior so we can count up potentiometer is almost halfway now there so there's 127, there's 128, 129, and so on, and we can roll all the way up to 255 and then back down to zero. So let's take a quick look at the code. And again, this is very similar to the previous two examples. We've essentially just moved the um, actual getting the result into the interrupt. So uh, this is the same here. And ADC SRB is the same. So for ADC SRA, we're still enabling the analog to digital converter, but not starting it yet. Um, we're not going to enable the auto trigger because we're doing single conversion mode. But we are going to uh, turn on the ADIE, analog to digital converter enable bit, uh, interrupt enable bit. And when we get down here, we're going to call SEI to enable interrupts. And then we're going to start the analog to digital converter for the first time and then we're going to jump into our infinite while loop and while we're in this infinite while loop here each time that an analog to digital conversion completes this interrupt will run so when we get into the interrupt it's going to look uh, pretty similar to the while loop of the first program we're going to take the value from analog to digital converter high assign that to port d and then we're going to reset the ADSC bit to start the next conversion and then when the next conversion is complete this interrupt will run again and so on so let's take a look at the fourth program today. And we're motoring right along through these here. So the last one we're going to look at is analog to digital converter with interrupt free running. And go ahead and fire up Atmel Studio and RAW. And then I'm going to swing this over to the other screen to copy and paste out of. And Atmel Studio will bring up the screen in just a moment. There we go. So file, new project and paste in the name, choose OK, and we're still using the 328P of course, and there we go, and then when it comes up we'll rename our file here, so main.c, rename that, and then we'll copy and paste in the code, turn off code folding, close that, save, OK, control F5 to run it, and it's going to tell us we haven't chosen a programmer yet, yes we know that, at Mel Ice. ISP, control F5 again, and again we'll just really quickly test to make sure we get the same behavior, so starting to turn the potentiometer here, there, one, two, three, four, five, etc. You get the idea, we can count up to 127 is all but the last one lit, and there's 127, that's a little twitchy, there's 128, 129, and so on, then we can roll up to 255 and then back down to zero. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at the code here. And again, this is pretty similar to, the, it's actually really sort of the previous two programs combined, so um, AD MUX is still going to be the same, and ADC SRB is still going to be all zeros, so that's easy, and then ADC SRA, in this case, we are going to uh, turn on the ADATE bit, so we're enabling the auto trigger, in other words, free running mode, and we're also going to turn on the ADC interrupt. And if we get down here to the bottom of main. Uh, again, this looks pretty similar to the previous program. We enable interrupts, and then we start the analog to digital conversion, and we only have to start that once now because we're in free running mode, so then we jump into our while loop, so we're endlessly looping here, and each time an analog to digital converter, an analog to digital conversion, I should say, completes, this interrupt will run, and at that point we can simply take ADCH and assign that to port D, and we don't have to restart the conversion because we're in free running mode, so we're all set. So that um, completes this tutorial, and in the next tutorial we're going to get into interrupts in more det uh, detail. So I'll see everybody in the next one.